Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video, and today I'm doing a sequel to my 10 breakout players that I did a couple weeks ago, and we're now going to be doing a breakout player for this upcoming season for every single NBA franchise. There will be a few repeats in this video from that one, but I tried to change up as many as I could. Again, we're going through all 30 teams, starting with the Atlanta Hawks alphabetically and finishing with the Washington Wizards. I'll try and remember to put timestamps for each team, but there's a good chance that I forget. Regardless, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos and comment down below who you think the breakup player for your favorite franchise could be this season. Up first, we have the Atlanta Hawks and I want to talk about AJ Griffin. Now, there are a number of young players that I could see breaking out for this Hawks team as they grow into expanded roles. Jalen Johnson is a good example. I talked about Nyeka Okongwu in my breakup players video, I believe, because I think if he gets that starting opportunity, if they trade Clint Capella, OO will be amazing from day one as the starter. But I want to go ahead and touch on AJ Griffin, who I feel like had an under rated rookie season last year, especially as he continued to get more minutes. I really like what he did when Quinn Snyder came into the fold. His shooting was incredible last season. I think he's on the path to becoming one of the best wing shooters in the entire league. And the Hawks have had a bit of a problem with that small four position. DeAndre Hunter has been pretty good and they gave him a big time extension not too long ago, but he's also somewhat injury prone. Maybe AJ Griffin grows into that star small forward role for that team where it feels like for Atlanta with Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, they're current current cast. They've got a limited ceiling, but if they get great play from young guys, breakout seasons from like Onyeka Kongwu, Jalen Johnson, or even A.J. Griffin, their ceiling rises a lot. And I think A.J. Griffin in particular is someone who could really rise quickly. If he continues to come off the bench, I think he could also be in contention for six man of the year really, really soon. For the Boston Celtics, I'm going with Derek White, their new starting point guard. Marcus Smart is gone. They need someone to step up into that role. And I think it's going to be Derek White. Now, he kind of already had a breakout last year where he was an all defensive player. His numbers really rose whenever he got a starting opportunity. For example, Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown both missed some time later in the season, and Derek White stepped into that starting point guard spot and not only thrived, but he won Eastern Conference Player of the Week, scoring efficiently, locking down defensively, and playmaking at a high level. Those are all things I expect from him for this upcoming season. Of course, with a continued expanded role rather than a smaller window like he got last year, he's going to be the starting point guard. They're going to rely on him a lot, and I think Derek White's in for a fantastic season. For the Brooklyn Nets, it would be easy for me to go Mikhail Bridges here because he's the betting odds favorite to win most improved. But I want to instead pivot a little bit to his former son's teammate and now Nets teammate Cam Johnson. Cam just got a bag in this offseason, and he looked really good in the second half of the season as a Brooklyn Net, the best half season of his entire career. Numbers jumped, but the efficiency stayed relatively the same. He showed a lot of flashes of being able to do more things than he was previously showing. I think this could be a really big year for Cam Johnson. The Nets need guys to step up and score if they want to try and maintain their spot as a playoff team. I think Cam Johnson could be one of those guys scoring around 20 points per game, doing it really efficiently as he continues to establish himself as a player that any team would want that could fit into any system and thrive. For the Hornets, I'm going with a guy who I did talk about in my 10 breakout players video, but I'm so passionate about him having a breakout season that I want to talk about him again. It's Mark Williams, one of the most underrated rookies in the entire league last season. The Hornets were one of the best defenses in the entire league over the second half of the season. And the reason for that mostly was the play of Mark Williams. There were a number of other guys who, of course, also stepped up. But when he got into that starting center role, everything kind of just clicked for Charlotte. His rim protection, his overall defensive versatility, just being a guy that could threaten opposing offensive players at the rim and in the paint, it was huge for Charlotte. I think he's going to play an incredible role in what the Hornets try to do this season, a big swing factor play for how high they go up in the standings. Mark Williams is going to be really good in this league. I think it starts in this second season of his, where again, I don't think he's being talked about nearly as much as he should as one of the best young bigs in the NBA. For Chicago, I think there's one guy that most people are hoping breaks out here, and it's Patrick Williams. Maybe this takes a rebuild for him to actually get the opportunities to have a breakout season where at the deadline, things aren't going particularly well. They trade Levine, they trade DeMar DeRozan, or at least one of the two. And Patrick Williams finally gets the keys and they say, hey, show us what you can do. And I think when he gets the opportunity, Patrick Williams is going to thrive. I think it's just a matter of time for the Bulls to realize that they have a potential star in him and allow him to finally operate in the way that he can. 
So far throughout his career, he's been somewhat relegated to a third, a fourth option on most nights. But when he gets those opportunities to operate within himself and even beyond what people think possible, Patrick Williams looks really good. I'm really excited to see what he can do eventually when the Bulls do go towards a rebuild. I don't know if it's at this deadline or next offseason, but eventually Patrick Williams is going to be really good in this league, and I'm hopeful that it's this season. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm going to go with the easy answer and pick Evan Mobley. I have said a million times on here, he was my favorite player in the 2021 draft class, one of my favorite young guys period in the entire league, and right now, Mobley is on a path to superstardom. I mean, in his first two seasons, he's already become a top three deep point finisher. I think he could win it this upcoming season, continuing to grow on his defensive game. The offense continues to show a lot of flashes of him handling the ball in transition, you know, attacking defenders off the dribble, finishing around the rim, of course, catching lobs from Darius Garland or Donovan Mitchell. Mobley is just going to continue to get better and better in my opinion. I think there's a real chance that he's a first time also this upcoming season as Cleveland continues to climb as one of the best young cores in the entire league. For the Dallas Mavericks, I've already talked a bit about Josh Green on this channel, so instead, I'm going to go with Jaden Hardy. I think, again, people forgot how really solid he was when he actually got minutes last year. I don't know why it took the Mavericks so long to give Jaden Hardy a real run out there because when he finally got that opportunity, he was really solid. He's a big-time spark plug off the bench for them. I think he could be competing for potential six-man-of-the-year votes if he does get a lot of opportunities. I'm hopeful that he does because I think he could be a really great scorer in this league for a while and still believe he was one of the biggest steals of his draft class. I'm excited to see what Hardy can do and just he gives them another awesome offensive dynamo in that backcourt rotation with Kyrie, with Luka. They've got a lot of talent over there. For the Denver Nuggets, I'm going to go with Christian Brown. He played a really key role in a lot of those games in route to their title. He's only going into his second season, but they're going to rely on him a lot, especially with Bruce Brown leaving. He's now going to kind of play some of that role, in my opinion, some of that backup one, backup two spot off the bench. He showed a lot of hustle, some really solid defense, a couple big time scoring moments as well. Christian Brown showed a lot of flashes. It feels like he's ready for this opportunity. Opportunity. I think Denver's going to give him it, and he's going to thrive when given those chances. For the Detroit Pistons, there's a million players you could go with because it is such a young roster, but me personally, I'm again going to go with another one of my favorite young bigs. I've covered a lot of them so far in this video, but that's Jalen Duran. Duran, I really likened him to Bam Adebayo coming out of the draft, being a high-level defensive big that also has some really solid athleticism, can play make a bit, can score a bit. I think Duran is on that kind of path. I don't know if he ever truly becomes Bam Adebayo, but I think he can play a similar role role for the Pistons this upcoming season. I mean, he was just one of the youngest players in the league and thrived. He was amazing putting up some double-doubles, blocking shots, and doing it most of the season without Cade Cunningham, the team's best playmaker and lead guard. With Cade coming into the fold of things, I think their pick and roll is going to be incredibly fun to watch. I think he's got the opportunity to thrive alongside the other young talent on this roster. Duran, to me, is one of the most important pieces of that young core, and I think he's going to show a lot of people why this season. For the Golden State Warriors, I'm going to go with Jonathan Kuminga taken seventh overall a couple years back. He's had some really solid moments, but struggled to consistently get play time. Now for a Warriors team that's going to need his defense and his size out there in the front court, I'm hopeful that Kaminga will get a lot of run this upcoming season. I think he could do really well, especially with a new playmaker over there in Chris Paul, where if him and CP3 are sharing the court off the bench. I think CP3 could set him up for a lot of easy buckets with his playmaking. They could play really well off of each other, thrive off some cuts. I'm hopeful this is a big season for Jonathan Kaminga because I love his potential, but part of me is starting to think that maybe he won't ever find that truly in Golden State where they're trying to compete for a championship now. Hopefully this season proves me wrong, but I am a little bit worried. For the Houston Rockets, again, like the Pistons, I could talk about a number of players, Alperen Shengun, Jabari Smith Jr., but instead, I want to talk about Jalen Green, who was taken a few years ago back in 2021 and has been really solid since then. He just averaged 22 points per game, albeit somewhat inefficiently. But I think a big part of that is just a lack of talent around him. They've got some really promising young players, but it's more so potential with a lot of those guys and not actually, you know, talent around him at the moment that leads to him having to try to take over a lot of times, which, you know, in turn leads to a lot of inefficiency. I think now with Fred Van Vliet out there as a playmaker alongside him, just a backcourt mate who can take a lot of that scoring pressure off of him. Now I think Jabari Smith Jr. can have a breakout season, Alperin Shengun. I just believe the roster is a lot better around Jalen Green now than it has been over the past few seasons. That's going to allow him to not have to try and take over as much to will them to wins. It's 
going to allow him to focus more so on what he does well, and that's being an incredible athlete, a really ridiculous shot maker at times, just hitting some of the most absurd buckets I've ever seen. I think Jalen Green is still going to be really, really good. I've seen some people give up on him, but not me. I still think Jalen Green is going to be an all-star in this league, and I think this season is a big step towards that. For the Indiana Pacers, again, I'm going with somewhat of an obvious pick here. It's Benedict Matherin. The first half of the season, he was amazing. He was one of the top rookie of the year contenders, and then as the season went on, his efficiency dove a bit, and he just kind of stopped being as effective. It happens a lot, especially for rookie scores. And again, similar to the Jalen Green situation we just talked about, I think Benedict Matherin is in a better position to succeed this upcoming season. He's got an all-star alongside him still in Tyrese Halliburton, but now there's like Bruce Brown, Obi Toppin, Juris Walker helping with a bit of the defense, which could turn into some transition opportunities for a guy like Benedict Matherin who thrives in the open court. Miles Turner's still out there. The talent overall, I think, is going to progress between Isaiah Jackson, who I thought about putting on this list as well. Andrew Nemhard, who I like a lot. I've raved about this Pacers team a lot this season, and I do believe that Benedict Matherin is being forgot about amongst this conversation as a second year breakout player. Some of the shot creation we saw from him last season, the athleticism, Matherin's going to be really good and a star in the backcourt next to Tyrese for a while. And this upcoming season, I think he could truly break out. For the Clippers, it was hard to pick someone because they're a really old team, mostly consisting of guys in their mid 30s, or at least the main players on the roster they're going to play are of that age. But one young player who I think could have a significant role and thrive in it this upcoming season is Kenya Martin Jr. They got him from the Houston Rockets where he just had a really underrated season. And I now think for the Clippers, he could replicate some of that and then some. Now, we put up 12 points per game, and with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, all these guys in the Clippers, I don't know if he's going to put up that level of numbers, but I think he could be a double-digit scorer playing some high-level defense on a team trying to compete for a championship, and to me, I think that consists of a breakout. People are really going to learn how good Kmart Jr. is over there in Los Angeles, assuming they give him the run that he's deserving of. For the Los Angeles Lakers, I feel like Austin Reeves is most people's pick for this spot, but instead, I want to talk for a bit about Rui Hachimura, who's fantastic in the playoffs, especially against the Memphis Grizzlies, where he he was drilling threes like he was Clay Thompson. He was scoring in bunches off the bench, a really huge spark plug for them in a lot of those games. He did more of that against the other two teams that they faced, played some really solid defense against the Denver Nuggets on Nikola Jokic while Anthony Davis roamed on the other side. Just overall, a very versatile player who came in and really changed the way the Lakers could play. I think he's going to have some starting spots this upcoming season. He'll probably also come off the bench sometimes if Jared Vanderbilt is needed for a more defensive heavy matchup. But regardless, Rui's going to get a ton of run. I think he's going to build off the things that he showed in the playoffs last year and have the best season of his career this year. For the Grizzlies, there's a number of players that I could go with here. There's like Zaire Williams, Jake LaRavia, Kenneth Lofton Jr. But I'm going to pick David Roddy. I was impressed with his physicality and the defense that he showed throughout last season. He had a good showing in the summer league. The three-point shot is definitely a work in progress. But if he can get that to fall, I think he can step in as their starting small forward on some nights. That's a role that I'm a bit unsure about at the moment. Their wing play seems kind of weak. Losing Dylan Brooks, maybe Marcus Smart... Ja Morant and Desmond Bain all managed to start at the one, two, and three spots when Ja does return, but that feels a bit small to me. They might need a bit more size with a guy like David Roddy. I'm not really sure which way they're going to go, but regardless, even if he doesn't start, they need some more depth at that position. I think Roddy is my favorite of the young wings to step up and have a really good year for the Grizzlies. For the Miami Heat, I have no idea who's actually going to be on the roster if a Dame trade happens, so I'm just going to take a shot at somebody and we'll see if he ends up getting dealt over to Portland. This part will probably become somewhat outdated pretty soon, but I'm going to go with Haywood Highsmith. I liked a lot of what I saw from him this past season. He had that 18-point game against Denver in the finals, which I thought was really good, and I do believe there's a chance that he survives staying on the heat in the Damian Lillard trade, and if he does, they're going to be dealing guys like Nikola Jovic. Maybe even Caleb Martin gets sent somewhere, either to the Blazers or somewhere else for an additional first-round pick to throw in the deal, so they're going to need some guys to step up in the front court, and I think Highsmith is a prime candidate to do so, especially if he's now playing alongside a playmaker like Damian Lillard out there in some of his minutes. I like Haywood's game a lot, and if he does stay on the heat after the Dame trade, he could have a good year. Like the Clippers, the Bucks are a hard team to pick someone for because they're an older roster that's competing for a championship, but I went ahead and picked Marjan Bochamp. I think if anybody's going to break out on that roster truly, it's going to be him. Marjan was really solid in his rookie season. It wasn't a blowaway campaign or anything, but it was good for a rookie especially, who a lot of people thought was going to be pretty raw, and it was 
also thrown into the fire on a championship contending team. I was really impressed with the way that he stepped up, especially in the face of a number of injuries to that Bucks roster. I think he could again be an integral piece to what they do this season. Like what I saw from him in Summer League, he just dropped like 80 points, I think it was, in the Crossover League or one of those pro am leagues, which doesn't mean much, but I still think it's pretty cool and shows some of the potential that he has. I'm excited to see what Marjan could do this season. For the Minnesota Timberwolves, I could have gone with Anthony Edwards because I think he could have an All-NBA season. Eventually, I think he'll be an MVP type of player. But instead, I went with Jade McDaniels, who's a bit more under the radar. I think most people know about the defense where he was completely robbed of being an all-defensive player. I think that's a tragedy that Jade McDaniels wasn't on that team. I expect him to make it this upcoming season, getting more notoriety. I think the offensive game has a lot more potential, too, than people are realizing. He can handle the ball. He can knock down some shots. I think Jay McDaniels is going to become a star in this team. It is a big swing factor for the Minnesota Timberwolves becoming one of the top teams in the West. If Jay McDaniels has the kind of season that I think he can, the Timberwolves are going to be absolutely terrifying in the West this season. For the Pelicans, I'm going with my guy out of UVA, Trey Murphy III. Big time star potential, in my opinion, in his future. It's hard for him to get consistent big time scoring opportunities behind Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, Jonas Valanciunas, all those guys on this roster. But on a team that deals a lot of injuries, every time someone gets hurt, Trey Murphy steps up. And even when someone isn't injured, when Trey Murphy comes off the bench, he's letting you up from three, like at the hash mark. He's attacking off the bounce. He can dunk on you. The defense is solid. He's got a crazy wingspan. Trey Murphy, the third, is really good. Again, I think he's just oozing star potential. And if the Pelicans give him a big time opportunity, like I think they should, they might have a third guy on their hands. For the Knicks, he kind of already had a breakout season last year, but I'm buying on him being even better this season and that's Emmanuel quickly. Now he's going to continue to come off the bench because they do have Jalen Brunson out there, but being a six man of the year candidate, maybe that's a fine role for Emmanuel quickly at this point. A really underrated guard defender. Like he was amazing at defending last season. He was in consideration, like I said, for six man of the year the entire season. The scoring was solid. The playmaking is solid too. Emmanuel quickly is just the ideal backup guard. And I think as a really young player and with his play last season, he's going to get more opportunities. He's going to thrive in those. And anytime Jalen Brunson is out, even though they're losing an all-star caliber player in the backcourt, Emmanuel quickly is one of the best options possible to step up, and I think he's going to build on all of that this year. As a Thunder fan, I could tell you about a million different players that are going to break out for this upcoming season, but one guy in particular who I think some people are forgetting about is Josh Giddy? Giddy was great in his sophomore season. He built on everything from his first year. The efficiency came along. The playmaking was still phenomenal. He utilized his size a lot more in scoring, which is exactly what he needs to do. As one of the bigger guards you'll see out there, I think he's going to build on that a lot in this upcoming season. Having Chet there now as a lob threat, just overall a vertical spacing guy, that's going to be huge for his playmaking. Give him another option off the pick and roll, playing alongside Chet, dishing out to him on pick and pops. I think he's super important for him. And as Shea continues to get better, J Dub, the play making opportunities are just going to continue to open for Giddy. He's going to have more space around him with more shooting than ever to operate inside and again attack those mismatches on smaller guards. A lot of people are talking about how great our young core is and I really appreciate that but I think Giddy sometimes gets forgotten a little bit in some of those conversations. Orlando is just another squad where I could pick so many different players but I'm going to pick Franz Wagner who in my opinion might be the single most underrated player in the entire league. I think there's real all-star potential for him as soon as this upcoming season. The defense really solid the shooting. He's one of the better shooters out there for Orlando. He can attack off the dribble. He can play make. Franz does just a bit of everything. He's such a solid all-around player, an ideal running mate in that front court for Paolo Bancaro. Don't forget about Franz Wagner. When you talk about this magic young core and the potential all-stars over there, Franz belongs in that conversation. One of the best players out of that stacked 2021 draft class, and I think he's only going to get better this season. For the 76ers, Tyrese Maxey may be a breakout player if James Harden gets dealt, but for right now, he still is on the roster. So instead, I'm going to go with Paul Reed, who has played some backup big minutes for Joel Embiid over the past past few seasons. They just retained him in restricted free agency. And to me, that shows that they've got big plans from Paul Reed was saying on a podcast or some type of interview that Nick Nurse and he have talked about him trying to play a lot more of a role this upcoming season. Nick Nurse wants to turn him into a Pascal Siakam type of player. Now, I don't know if Paul Reed is ever going to hit that level, but I do like the idea of Paul Reed being a bit more involved in the system. He's one of the more talented young players over there on the Sixers roster. And I hope he just gets that chance. He's been the best backup big by far for the Sixers over the past few years. Years, and so hopefully Paul Reed gets a lot of run and Nick Nurse can unlock some potential in him. I think he's got that chance. For the Phoenix Suns, I'm going with Kade Bates-Diop, probably my favorite free agent acquisition that the Suns made the entirety of this offseason, which is saying a lot because they signed about a billion guys. 
He was really good for the Spurs last year, knocking down threes and playing really solid defense. He's going to do all of that over here for the Phoenix Suns and also get so many wide open looks playing off of Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Ayton. In my opinion, he'll probably end up starting for a majority of the season. I love his fit in that lineup and the league is going to learn Kate Bates Diop's name really quick. For the Blazers, I'm going to pick Anthony Simons. I've talked a good bit about Shaden Sharp on the channel recently. So instead, I want to show Ant some love over there because he's been underrated. The three-point shooting, he shoots it at volume and shoots it really well. A very similar game to Dame at some points if you watch them play alongside each other out there. It's like you're almost watching a mirror of Dame at some moments. And with Dame eventually being traded, Simons is going to put up a bunch of shots. He's still going to have a really solid playmaker next to him in Scoot Henderson, who also is more of a attack the basket, you know, highly athletic guard to kind of give a little bit of difference in that backcourt. I like the idea of those two guys, kind of a yin and yang situation with those two playing off of each other. I think it's gonna be a fun backcourt. You've also got Shane Sharp over there. They've got a fun young future over there in Portland, even though the Dame trade hasn't happened yet. For the Sacramento Kings, I'm gonna pick Keegan Murray. I think a lot of people, just because Keegs came into the league as a more complete type of player, think that he doesn't have a lot of potential. I completely disagree. I still think Keegan Murray has a lot of upside to improve in the Sacramento Kings system in particular. He's in a great position to do so. In my opinion, he's their biggest swing factor to becoming like true championship contenders. You know what you're getting with Fox. You know what you're getting with Sabonis and a number of their players on this roster. But if Keegan Murray hits his potential like I think he can, the Kings are going to be something incredibly dangerous this season. I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table. And again, I think people are sleeping on his overall potential. For the Spurs, I'm going to pick Devin Vassell. He was fantastic before injuries really derailed his year. I think coming back, if he has a full healthy season, the league is going to be put on notice immediately, especially when with this new spotlight that they have on them with Victor Wembanyama out there, who I also think is just going to make the game a lot easier for Devin Vassell. He's going to thrive. He's such a high-level scorer. Some of the shots that he hit over the course of this past season, if you didn't watch him, go back and watch some Devin Vassell highlights. This is a name that you want to remember because down the line, in my opinion, he's going to be an all-star type of player, and you're going to be one of the people that knew him early before the league really caught on in this upcoming season. For the Raptors, I kept it simple and just went with Scotty Barnes, an amazing rookie campaign and a sophomore campaign that was a bit disappointing in some people's eyes, but I think there were still some really promising things from him, in particular with the playmaking. Nick Nurse put him a lot of ball handling and offense initiating roles last year, which some of them he thrived in. Sometimes it was a bit of a struggle, but that's what young players do. They try things out. They learn, explore their game, and sometimes it doesn't work, but I do think those reps are going to help him a lot this upcoming season. They lost Fred Van Vliet in free agency, so they don't have a lot of ball handlers and playmakers over there. They did bring in Dennis Schroeder, who's going to help with that a bit, but I think Scotty Barnes is again going to be put in opportunities to create offense. And last year, he got a lot of those chances. I think he can build on them this season. He's still shown some really fun flashes of being a really high level defender. I like Scotty Barnes's game a lot still. I know a lot of people have given up on him and sure it wasn't this blow you away sophomore campaign, but giving up on a, an amazing rookie campaign player after a somewhat disappointing second year, it just feels weird to me. Scotty Barnes has all the potential in the world and I'm still on the hype train. For the Utah Jazz, I'm going to pick Ochai Baji. Again, a team with a bunch of young players that I think can make an impact, but I think Igbaji plays an important role for them. He's going to give them a lot of floor space and will play really well off Lowry Markinen, Walker Kessler, John Collins, who's now over there, which is still incredibly weird. I don't know how that's going to work. And I think Igbaji is being forgotten amongst the sea of young talent that the Jazz have. They've done a great job in this rebuild. I think Igbaji can be an important piece of that team going forward. He's going to play some really big bench minutes for them, be one of the first guys in that second unit. And again, being a really solid floor spacer is important for this Jazz team. That's going to need guys like him going forward. And finally, for the Wizards, give me Johnny Davis. I know the rookie campaign was a disaster. He was in and out of the G League, and when he was in the NBA, it was really, really rough. The efficiency was terrible. It wasn't a good rookie season for Johnny Davis, but I'm hopeful in his second season he can put it together. And if he just has a solid season, then that's enough of a breakout, in my opinion, to put him on the right track. He doesn't have to be like an all star or make his name as one of the best young players in the league or anything like that. But I think Johnny Davis, if he can just put together a solid season, get on the right track on a Wizards team that really has no expectations, I think that's a big win for both him and the Wizards. I'm hopeful he can do so. And I'm crossing my fingers that this year is a lot better than the last season. And yeah, that's my one breakout player for every team. There are a number of guys on each roster that I think could break out. 
out, but these are just the 30 players that I really want to talk about in this video. Again, let me know who you think your favorite team's breakout player is going to be this upcoming season. And if there are any other guys on this list that I missed, I appreciate you watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. I plan on making more of these one from every team type of videos throughout the offseason. I think one I have planned is one bold prediction for every NBA team. I also think I want to do like one question for every NBA team leading into the season, but that'll be probably a bit closer to when the year actually starts. If you have any other ideas, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what y'all have to say. But yeah, for right now, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one say back.